why art? So I figured rather than giving you an hour and a half slide lecture in art history, don't act like you're not relieved. <laughs> I figured I'd tell you a story. And it's a story I know well because it's about my family's farm. And we've been farming the same land since the late 1920s outside of Phoenix, Arizona. And through the course of that time, we've grown everything from alfalfa and cotton to kohlrabi and bok choy. I am the fourth generation, but I'm also the last to farm this land, and that's because of this. Now, suburbia has been knocking on our door for the past decade. And when I returned to run the family business in the beginning of the last housing boom, I just inherently knew that I had to document this process or even just rationalize what was happening. And at first, I did it with projects like this, where I'd take a 20-acre barley field, grow it, and I'd hoe this massive floor plan out of it. <laughs> yeah. Partly because I'm nuts, but also to reflect on the, the past and future. Another type project was like this. My grandfather sold the first portion of our property to a development. And so I went to the city and got the plot map. And then I GPSed it out on a third scale adjacent to the development. I grew all the houses, though, in sorghum and planted all the roads in wheat. And so... <laughs> But really, what art is so good at is asking questions. The question I, that I had was, why does this make sense? Why is this the best, the highest use of this ground? And instead of pointing fingers, I started to think about pointing thumbs. So let me tell you a little bit about my family's farm. Now, I grow 200 acres of carrots a year on average, which is about 60 tons a day that we harvest for like half the year. I actually figured out that if I pulled out all the carrots that I've grown over the last 15 years and connected them end to end, we've circ circumnavigated the world eight times. <laughs> and here's the kicker. I've never seen one of my carrots in the supermarket. And why is that? And I started to think about that more, and I realized that maybe where that decision starts to take place is in, an, in the marketplace, or as my friend calls it, the... Uh, <laughs> It's the theater of land use. So what I did is I started filming everything I grow from seed to harvest with a simple idea that if you went into a supermarket, bought a head of lettuce, and you were able to see that life cycle of that plant in a few seconds or a few minutes, that it might change the way you think about that food. And you see 160 days to grow a carrot. How might that change the way you think about the food that you're buying? So with the generous support of an organization called Creative Capital, I was able to debut that in Sundance in 2010. And then we realized that it works. These kids watch broccoli grow for 18 minutes. <laughs> While their poor dad, you can tell because there's a six pack of beer at the bottom of that, <laughs> went around and tried to shop. And his kids just sat there and stared at this. Well, why? That's the thing about art, wonderment. That it can put us into a state that words can't describe. Completely simplifies everything, right? I did all these conceptual projects, and all I had to do was let the plant tell the story. So with this in mind, we started to follow the, decided to follow this, in essence, research and create a nonprofit called the Digital Farm Collective. And what we do is through three programs, one called the Seedlings, where we develop curriculum for kids to inspire them to keep engaged in the entire growing process of their, of their gardens at school. We give technology to them to, to enable them to research their garden, but also explore and tell us through their own eyes what they're seeing. And through that, we learn how better to communicate and inspire kids, the next generation of growers and consumers. We also have another initiative called the Living Library. This is where we're sending out these camera units to farmers around the world to document their crops, but also tell us how they grow it. Because as we all know, the generational growing knowledge of farmers is continually being lost every year. So we try and hold on to that knowledge and that data about growing those crops. And then what we do is we work with a program called Life Cycles. And that's where we take all of that research and all that information and create multimedia installations in public places, in restaurants, in supermarkets. And our goal is to inspire 
and educate people on the beautiful process of this. This is, my, this is my son. And really, it comes down to all this research, all this work is about answering a few simple questions that gets me this way every time I talk about it. That, <laughs> that, thank you. What does it really mean to be a farmer? And why is this connection, this feeling that I have for that land so important that he know? And why is that important for our future? And all I do know is that words won't cut it sometimes, and sometimes we need more. So thank you. <laughs>